Hi guys, so I want to show you three easy ways to get a root shell on a Linux box. The first one is to exploit the SUID binaries you can find. As talked up, talked before, you can find many of them on GTFO bin. So if you already know the binary, just go ahead and, and find it. For example, the system GTL, and then basically you execute whatever commands that's still uh, mentioned in the pink areas here. Now, depending on if you're executing like sudo or different ways, you might need to have to try some of them in order to get a successful hit. Finding SUID binaries are quite easy. You just go ahead and type, type find, and you do perm. That's the command, basically. So you're going to look for anything on the from the root directory, and you look for file permissions 4000. And you're directing all errors to dev nulls, you're not, so you're only seeing the files you can read in your list. Executing these kind of binaries is the way to get a root shell or another higher privilege shell for you. Second one is to use the sudo command. Let me just show you what I mean. So usually when you got a shell, you type sudo-l. And in this particular example, I am logged in with Kali, and you can see that user Kali may run the following commands on Kali, all, all, all. So basically, I am all powerful on this machine. But sometimes you get a you do get a, a shell with a user called Bob or Ben or Luis or something, and then you see that you can execute some sort of file with that particular user. So if you can do that, and you see that you have, for example, let me just copy you something here on the screen. If you see something like this here, so root with no password can execute use of bin find, then it's a really good idea for you to try and execute this file. Find is then something you can execute, probably as use, and then again you go back to the uh, GG4 bins and type find. Then you know you find, find, <laughs> and you can see they can execute different commands, and by that way you can by typing sudo in front of it, sudo find exec, spawn a new shell, and then quit basically, and you get a new shell with a higher privilege. This is almost the same as executing the uh, file with a higher privilege that you find on the SUID, but it's not exactly the same. There can be many things when you do <coughs> sudo l, you see which kind of commands you can execute as a sudo. -er. All right, third way is to look for example a cron job. <clears throat> you all know that a cron job is something you can um you see cron tab. You can see whatever cron jobs you have on your machine by doing this. Cat etc cron tab. And then you can see when a, a cron job is executed and so on and so on. If you for example see something like this in the file it basically means that, I'm just presenter, that every five minutes, root is going to execute this script called script sh. Then, then what is you gonna do? Is you're going to visit this file, and if you with the current privileges can write to that file, you can rewrite anything inside of it, and depending what you wanna do, you could, in theory, inject this command. Now, I'm not gonna do it, this command basically means that you're gonna say all, let me just make can mark everything so it looks beautiful. You will echo user all, all, no password all to etc sudo us. That basically means that any user can execute uh, anything uh, basically with no password, you know. And that's pretty, pretty awesome, isn't it, right? So another thing you also could do is you could basically say, but I'm not really interested in that, I just want a shell, then of course you can pop a shell, that's no problem, just netcat, IP address, port, whatever, and do reverse bin shell to my machine, that's a reverse shell, you just spawn it right there. Another very interesting thing you could do, is actually just say that, uh, I want to create a new root user, just like that, and you go in and say new root, and basically, you can just log in with root and um, have access to anything. So there are many different things you can do. This is three fast ways to get a root user. So what is the chance you're gonna meet any of those three when you have a shell on the machine? 
Well, I would like to say it's very common you have some sort of SUID. You can go ahead and look at GTO bins. There's a slight chance that you have something you can sudo, like find command or some command you need for that user. But if you're gonna think about it, when you do server hardening, or if you are the guy that's gonna server harden that server, will the user benefit from having root privileges to execute some command? When is it necessary? That is the question you're gonna ask. This is three different ways to get a root shell pretty easy on your box. See you again soon.